Welcome, Welcome to Own or Disown, where tech decisions are made easy. easy, 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 easy. Hi, Stephen from Own or Disown. A few months back, I reviewed the 2023 Alienware M18 with an i9-13900HX and an RTX 4080. I also made a video showing how to cool that beast. And if you haven't seen those videos, I will put links in the description. Now, in today's video, I'm going to compare the Acer Predator Helios 18 against the Alienware M18, as they may be two 18-inch laptops that you are considering, both for the same specs. But before we, before we jump into that video, a quick word from today's sponsor, Newegg, who asked me to talk about the 2023 ASUS ROG Strix G16, which is available over at Newegg for $1,200. But at the time of their recording this, they have a great discount of $200. Now see the description for a link to it. The Strix G16 is a mid-range gaming beast. Powered by a 10-core, 16-thread i5-13450HX CPU and a top-of-the-line RTX 4050 GPU. With 6GB of dedicated video memory and a max graphics power of 140 watts. For great multitasking and game load times, it has 16GB of DDR5 memory and a 1TB PCI Express SSD. It's a 16-inch gaming laptop in a 15-inch body, super thin bezels and a 90% screen-to-body ratio. The 16-inch 16 16x10 16 panel has a fast 165Hz refresh rate, 7 millisecond response time plus G-Sync with its included Advanced Optimus, which allows for tear-free gaming boosted by 5-10% to 10 in dedicated GPU mode, whilst providing great battery life with its 90 watt hour battery. With a colour gamut of 100% of sRGB, Dolby Vision and a contrast of 1000 to 1, it's a great panel for gaming, work and entertainment. Cooling is also great. ASUS uses 3 fans and liquid metal on the CPU. With its cyberpunk aesthetic, graffiti inspired accents and unique styling such as a dot matrix on the lid, the Strix G16 is bound to turn some heads. You get plenty of ports including a Thunderbolt 4, a USB-C with power delivery and HDMI 2.1. And to sweeten the deal, you also get a free 90-day Xbox Game Pass, giving you access to hundreds of games. Welcome back! So let's see how the Alienware M18 and the Helios 18 compare. The Alienware M18 can be configured with either an Intel or AMD CPU, which the Helios 18 cannot. I have already tested the Ryzen 9 7945HX in the ASUS Strix Scar 17, and I found that it was faster than the i9-13900HX, both in gaming and highly threaded workloads. If you want to go with an RTX 4060, the M18 can be configured with a 1600p display whilst the Helios 18 only has a 1080p panel and the M18 is $100 cheaper, all else being equal. However, with the 4060 model, both are limited if you choose Intel to the 13700HX. Now step up to the RTX 4070, then the Alienware allows you to choose up to the i9-13900HX, whilst the Helios 18 again limits it to the 13700HX. If you select this CPU and the 165Hz 2560x1600, the Helios 18 costs $1,999, compared to the M18's 2150 so that is a big saving right there. Now as configured with the i9-13900HX and the RTX 4080 and the 1600p display, the M18 is 2800 and the Helios 18 is 2500 Plus, Acer gives you a much better 250Hz mini LED display versus the IPS level 165Hz on the Alienware. Now, if you want an RTX 4090, your only option is the Alienware M18. Now, the main selling point of the Helios 18 over the Alienware M18, I would say, is that it has a mini LED display, and it is really nice. It is super bright. I measured it at 814 nits at 100% versus only 292 nits on the Alienware display. Even at 50% brightness, it is 70% brighter. The mini LED panel on the Helios 18 has 1000 local dimming zones and can produce a great HDR image. Consequently, the Helios 18 produces an outstanding contrast of 813,000 to 1 compared to 750 to 1 on the Alienware. It is hard to pick this up on the camera as the screen is so bright, but trust me, it is better than that on the M18. As for the color gamut, they are both pretty actually quite comparable. 
but the 250 hertz refresh rate on the Helios 18 panel does produce less ghosting in my test UFO test. Now another huge benefit for the Helios Mini LED is backlight bleed and, and its blacks. I would say it is comparable to an OLED panel in this regard, whilst the M18 suffers some IPS glow and a little bleed on the bottom left hand corner. The only issue I can see on the Mini LED is that it exhibits PWM flicker down to 25% brightness. I could only pick this up via the camera, but for those sensitive to it, it may lead to eye strain. So yeah, getting a system that is cheaper and has a better display is a big plus in my book. Now, both machines use Advanced Optimus, which allows you to switch to dedicated GPU mode manually, or it can do it automatically, giving you G-Sync. Though the big benefit of the Alienware is that it has four M.2 slots compared to two in the Helios 18. This can be a huge deal if you have lots of games or handle large video files and don't want to deal with a separate storage solution. But a big negative in my opinion is the cooling system on the Alienware M18. And in fact, I did a separate video showing how to cool it down. It was that bad. The CPU would easily hit 99 degrees whilst gaming in high performance mode. The Helios 18 in the same game, Far Cry 6, using turbo mode is a few degrees cooler at 95. But the big kicker is that the Alienware uses an, an inverted motherboard. So cool air brought, say from underneath, like if you use a cooling pad, has much less of an effect compared to the traditional setup on the Helios 18. When I did my unboxing video on the Helios 18, people complained that it only had two fans. And for sure, there is wasted space there. They could probably fit a third fan if they wanted. However, the M18 has four fans and that didn't help at all. In fact, to lower the temperatures on the Alienware M18, you have to cap out the CPU temperature to 85 degrees in their software, which in turn will lower performance. The Helios 18 uses fifth generation Aeroblade fans with metal blades and rectangular heat pipes that provides a better connection to the cooling fins. And without a doubt, the default fan profile on the Helios 18 is louder than the Alienware. I actually measured 66 decibels in turbo mode and 61 in performance mode, whilst the M18 was 58 in its high performance mode. You can alter the fan profiles within the software to lower the noise. And I would say if you keep the Helios 18 uh, out of turbo mode, you will still have decent temperatures. For the Alienware, you'll have to lower the TCC offset to set the max CPU temperature and it will adjust this power to the CPU accordingly. The M18 has a mechanical keyboard, of which I was a huge fan. It is moderately clicky, but it felt much better to me than the membrane keyboard used on the Helios 18. Not that it was bad by any means. With both, you will enjoy a large keyboard deck with plenty of wrist support. I would say the RGB keyboard is pretty similar, but if I had to pick one, I would go with the Helios 18 as it's mini LED uh, is makes it a little bit brighter. And as for the trackpads, I do prefer that on the Alienware as the Helios does rattle and I always find that annoying. Both have an option for RGB at the back. Now this is not an area that bothers me that much as you don't see that, but I do prefer that on the Alienware. I do think that the ring it has does look a bit more premium. Acer includes some magnetic shrouds that attach to the rear exhaust vents if you feel like switching things up a bit, but I think this is a bit of a gimmick. The Alienware has an RGB alien head on the lid, whilst the Helios opts for a more clean look. The underside of the M18 is metal, whilst Acer uses plastic on the Helios 18 to reduce the price, reduce its weight and the amount of heat to your lap. And one thing I did notice was that on the Helios, the battery wasn't screwed in, but was held in place by the back panel. This is the first time I've actually seen this. And the M18 has a 97 watt hour battery that lasted me 2 hours 20 minutes streaming YouTube at 50% brightness, in Optimus mode and all the battery saving features enabled. The Helios 18 has a 90 watt hour battery and this only managed 1 hour 22 minutes which to be fair is pretty crap. Now since both laptops have a big footprint you may not be too concerned about the weight but the Helios 18 was £7 1 ounce and with a power brick nine pounds 12 ounces however the m18 is much heavier at eight pounds 12 ounces and with a larger power brick 11 pounds 13 ounces so that extra two pounds of weight can add up if you do travel a lot as for the software i do find the acer software more intuitive the alienware control center is better than it was but it still has a steeper learning curve but i really do like the option to cap the cpu temperature one would say you shouldn't need to do this 
and just changing the power mode should suffice it. And to be honest, that is true, of course. Now, Alienware has a key to activate high performance mode, whilst the Helios 18 has a dedicated button to switch between power modes, which is definitely better. You do get a notification pop up when you change it, but I didn't always see it when I was gaming. So the solution Legion has of changing the RGB color of the power button is still the best solution out there. Both laptops have decent speakers. I measured both at about 80 decibels and are adequate to drown out most of the fan noise. Although I would be inclined to use headphones with the Helios 18 if you do plan on gaming using turbo mode, since that fan noise is pretty loud. If you use your laptop a lot on, uh, say, using Teams or Zoom calls, I think the Alienware M18's webcam is better. It is 1080p versus 720p on the Helios and is definitely clearer. Both have decent microphones, though. So we have a 720p webcam, which is a shame. I'd like it to be 1080p, um, but it does pick up uh, my voice pretty well. And I do have the uh, TV going on in the background. Testing, testing, one, two, three, and when you type... Unlike the Helios, the Alienware does have a Windows Hello camera for logging you in. However, often it would tap difficulty. You know, you really just have to adjust your position just to find that sweet spot. The ports on both are comparable, although I must give the nod to Alienware for having a USB-C on the side. So many laptops keep these at the back, which makes it far more awkward to plug in high-speed portable storage devices as you have to, you know, lean and appear over the screen to get them in. Also, Alienware has a full-size SD card reader, even though, in their wisdom, they slapped it on the back. Acer uses a micro SD card reader, which makes no sense to me. It's not as if they are short on space. Now, here are a few slides showing how they both compare in CPU-only work uh, and also in gaming. So across eight games, high performance and balance modes on the Alienware perform the same. Whilst the performance mode on the Helios 18 was 5% faster and turbo mode was 11% faster. So basically using turbo mode on the Helios 18 is like using an RTX 4090 on the Alienware. So this is a huge cost saving. As for the 13900HX, the Helios 18 in turbo mode had a slight advantage in most non-gaming tests, but only by say one to 2%, so nothing drastic. It was only in tests like uh, Time Spy and Time Spy Extreme where we saw a 17% and 8% improvement respectively. All right, that was quite a bit to digest. So which do I think is the better machine? Well, given that the 4080 model on the Helios 18 is cheaper than the comparable Alienware M18, and is also faster, um, it's cooler, and it seems to have uh, be a no-brainer, I would go for the Helios, especially given its much better display. However, you may choose to go with the AMD route via the Alienware, which will make it faster and probably extend that battery life a little bit. I still expect it to run pretty hot because of that inverted motherboard design. Now, I said it in its review, and I will say it again, I really dislike an inverted motherboard because it makes repacing it that much harder. Now, you have to give credit to Alienware for making better use of the space by having four M.2 slots having a Windows Hello camera and a better webcam. Now let me know in the comments which one you prefer. And if you're new to my channel, consider subscribing. Right, thank you for watching. Bye now.